Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to be with you today. Today, we want to talk about a subject uh, that's really hard to explain, but it's more of a concept than a theology or a philosophy. But we want to talk about life in the ordinary or ordinary time. And I was recently talking to my spiritual director, and we were talking about my life. And it felt like just sort of a humdrum session. And so he asked me, where do you see God in your day-to-day life? And it reminded me of this idea of eking out life in the ordinary time. And so you could go on a walk, this walk, notice just the ordinary things of your life, ordinary things like a person's flowers that you didn't notice before, the things that you're doing in life that are just ordinary and taking time and space to notice where God is at in the ordinary and average part of your day. Great. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that comes to mind as you say this is I'm Greek, so I'm going to bust out some Greek today, but there are two different words for time in the Greek language, or at least the ancient Greek language. Um, Keros, Kairos, or Kronos. And um, the the first one is these big moments in our lives. And I think we all live and are excited for those um, Kairos or Keros moments where uh, it's the biggies, it's the excitement, it's the woohoo type of of life. Um, And yet most of life is Kronos, which is where we get the word chronological time. It's just the the day-to-day that that we're living and the passing of time. And I think that how we spend the Kronos time is actually the essence of life and what matters. And, you know, I think often if we're chasing after the, the, the Kairos moments, we tend to be in the hustle and the moving and the what's next. And I find that sometimes, and I don't know why we do this as, as humans, um, instead of being in the moment, we're either thinking about the next moment or maybe we're having a rich Kairos moment and we can't even savor it because we're so used to chasing the next one, the next one. And I I think being able to live in the chronos gives us the opportunity to sort of practice what does it mean to be present in the moment, which I think so many of the mindfulness teachers talk about being present in the moment. So uh, that's what comes to mind for me, Chris, as you're talking about this ordinary time and mundane. No, I I very much agree. I realize as we're starting to talk, even just reflecting on my life up to this point, and even some of my kids' lives, like our, one of our daughters is in dance everything is building to that recital. And and I was a performer for a long time. So you build, you build, you build to that performance. And then you take like a brief respite and then you build to the next performance. And then I grew up and I went into this career where my life was event driven. So we would build, build, build to the event. It's the same idea, just to an event. Uh, but then you're right. The majority of our days are spent in what we would call ordinary time, which tends to feel like a bit of a drain. I mean, I can, I think COVID really made it especially obvious because people were spending a lot of time in their space, but you might wake up and think, well, what are we going to do today? Pinky, right? <laughs> and it was like the same thing we did yesterday, only there's no taking over the world. <laughs> so um, yes, when I first started hearing people talk about enjoying this moment now, it was like, whoa, is that possible to really, it was almost to believe that this was going to work took a little bit of time for me. I realized like I had to really believe that this was going to be possible to enjoy these little moments and that it was going to qualitatively improve my life. So, yeah. Yeah. I think a practice that has really helped me with this idea of discovering the divine in the ordinary is this idea of centering prayer. I did centering prayer for like three years. It's this idea that you, that you just take some quiet time and you know, 20 minutes is what they recommend. And you just sort of like 
empty yourself of any thoughts, any ideas, any ambitions that you have for the day. You just sort of be. Uh, I think, you know, over the course of three years, this practice really helped me notice the ordinary, like the beauty in the ordinary time. Now, since then, I've had kids and... <laughs> finding 20 minutes in a day is like super tough. And so, you know, I mentioned earlier talking to my spiritual director, I, I think this is a practice that I want to reinstate in my life, you know, whether it's five minutes or 10 minutes, just taking time to sort of empty myself of any of my desires, my ambitions, you know, the thinking of the grandiose, the thinking of what, what in my day is going to be be the big thing that's going to, you know, sustain me for, for the next couple of days. And uh, so I, I'm super curious to instate this uh, practice in my life again, whether, you know, it's five minutes or 10 minutes, but I, I really hope that it will be helpful to to help me live into the ordinary. And I think I appreciate that, Chris, even thinking through in our day, what's the biggie, right? What are those big moments in our days? And I'm really struck by the invitation that Jesus offers where he says to look at the birds of the air, or he says, consider the lilies of the field. And Jesus seems to be offering us this invitation to pause and to actually contemplatively look at what is around us in nature that we otherwise would pass by, kind of like you mentioned earlier with the walk. And uh, last year I was leading a retreat, facilitating a retreat outside and we're in our circle and reflecting. And I invited everyone to turn their chairs to face outward towards nature. And uh, we took a moment to just, let's take in the surroundings and fix your gaze on whether it's the tree over there, the lake, the blade of grass, and just to take a moment to do that before we go into our next session together. And I think even those little again, that invitation from Jesus to actually look, to actually consider a lily. Like that's a different, that's a different verbiage that's used. And I don't know the Greek word right there. I'm not with my lexicon, but you know, there, there's a different action and invitation that Jesus seems to be offering us. Yeah. I've been reading this. Uh, well, I finished reading it with this joy diet book by Martha Beck. And I don't even remember what the menu item is for it, but at some point there's this notion of feasting your eyes and, uh, there's also a notion in that book about you need several treats a day. So it's all kind of like playing around the same idea. So if you're going to take a big risk, you need to reward yourself. And it's not necessarily like a food thing, but maybe it's, for instance, feasting your eyes. And so I took this moment to say, okay, what kinds of things bring me joy uh, when I look at them? And so like on my cell phone, right, there's the home screen, we just had Easter pictures that we raised. So everybody got dressed up. We took all the photos and then went about the rest of the day. And then the clothes come off. But um, so those pictures, are, one of them's my lock screen. One is my home screen. And they bring me so much joy because look at all the smiling faces and the cuteness. And um, there's a postcard on our fridge. It's been on our fridge forever. And it's a joke. Like my husband's sister sent it to him probably a decade ago. But like, there's a guy sitting in a chair and he's got his head down and his hand on his forehead. And another person is like patting them on the back, consoling them. And it's like, I don't want to make any age related jokes because I sincerely feel so bad about how old you are. And we were probably like 25. I don't know. We were so young when that postcard came around, but it still makes us laugh. So those little moments of just taking that pause, um, it's not so much true in the winter, but our neighbor's house has this tree that overlooks their house. And when the sun shines in the afternoon, it's this really interesting shadow that moves on the side of the house. And I try to capture it. Like I, I try to go be there because you know that sun's going to set and it's not going to stay forever. But so those little moments in the day to just really take in the breath and, and feast the eyes. That's, that's been a fun one for me lately. Yeah. I think our world is so amazing the gift of nature, the gift of just what we probably take for granted that's all around us. I think, yeah, we've been set up poorly by, by society in so many ways to really eke out the most of this beautiful life that we're surrounded by. Just even noticing, I, I love that, that verse, notice the lilies, um, taking time to contemplate all the beautiful things that are around us, 
uh, you know, the birds that are flying through the air, the formations that they make, the way that they interact with one another. And I think there's so much wonder that we've lost. And so I really like what we're talking about today because it's a, it's a return to wonder. I think it's this invitation to notice all the amazing things that are uh, surrounding us in our day, but we're just so busy or we're so uh, wrapped up in what we would call the mundane of life. And we're wrapped up in the task that we have to perform that we don't really notice the beauty in the ordinary. Yeah. And even kind of going back to the bird lily that you're mentioning, Chris, there's a, the birds, there's the breath, right? There's so many different types of birds and sizes of birds. And, and then the lily is one flower that you're kind of going deep with. And, you know, even on nature meditations and hikes and things like that, there is the, you know, the one invitation of just sort of taking in all of nature, going in a walk and just seeing what you see. But then there's also this practice called a sit spot where you're literally just sitting down in one particular spot for 20 or however long it is. And in this little square that I'm at sitting on this patch of grass or dirt or wherever I'm at, what do I notice around me in a deeper way and going deep with it? And again, I recognize these are privileges to be able to have time to do these things or to even be able to have access to nature. Um, and yet I think Jesus, you know, it seems like he picked very ordinary things. And so, you know, what's the, what's the beauty in the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I'm eating or, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be some fancy, we're going to these beautiful mountains if we don't live near them. But um, again, just that, that breath and that depth seems to be that multifaceted invitation. Yeah. Like a couple episodes ago, right. When we had Mary Reynolds on and she talks about, you know, I'm on this walk and I'm in a city. So it's not like, it's not all the nature, but I'd look up and it's so vast when we look up and that has continued to resonate for me. I mean, it was already a bit of a practice. If I was running to go get the kids, I might try that extra moment of taking in that deep breath and actually noticing the weather that day. Um, but sometimes, I mean, I've read about it this way that people, it's a little vacation, right? Even if you shut the door to having just buckled up a child and you're walking around the car, <laughs> it's just this little vacation that we get to take uh, to savor that moment. Um, and the same is true I think even if I'm just doing homework with the kids, because that's such an, right, we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again. One of my preschool teacher friends taught me this notion of we have to reteach. And so when she taught it to me, I thought like, oh, so teachers must just do that. They must be super into reteaching and be okay with it. And so the next time I talked to her, I was like, I've been trying to do this reteach thing, and it's so frustrating, and I just don't like it. And she's like, oh, nobody likes it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so if, okay, I don't have to like it. I'm just going to be doing it, but can I still enjoy this child? So if they say something funny, can I like really stop and go, that was funny, right? And just enjoy the moment, even though, right, we're going to be at this homework for an hour and a half. And that's not necessarily how I would have chose to spend my time. I would have rather spent all my time doing the laughing part. So to really glom onto that moment where we say, but that was funny. And I can laugh in the midst of my hour and a half of homework. It feels like a big deal. Yeah, I was actually just recently listening to an Oprah podcast and the person that she was interviewing, they were kind of talking about this concept in an Oprah kind of a way. And the lady was asking Oprah, like, what are you looking forward to tomorrow that you're gonna be doing? So she's like, I'm doing an interview and doing something else. And then she was planning to watch a movie with Stedman, her partner. And um, so she was kind of describing her emotions around the interview. But then when she got to the movie, she's like, oh, I hate it because he always falls asleep in the movie. And so, uh, and she gets, fr it's, she's like, it's a thing that we're constantly having to deal with. And so um, the person that she was uh, meeting with, she's like, well, um, basically kind of unpacking Oprah of, of all people and her emotions around the movie and come to find out that Oprah said that happens all the time where people fall asleep during movies. And it's so frustrating to her because she's like, so much went into making this movie. I'm not going to fall asleep on these people. But it was like she was pressuring herself. So instead of enjoying the movie, there were these expectations of what well, and she's like, I know he's going to fall asleep because he falls asleep every time. So do we just not watch the movie? But it's a ritual that we have. And so the lady was like, well, what would it look like for you to let go 
know of that and just to be, and if you fall asleep, that that's okay. And so Oprah was like, I have to rethink now my whole movie watching experience. But, you know, even sometimes in those things of recognizing I'm not looking forward to it or I'm anticipating disappointment. Well, what is that? And if we're maybe enjoying the moment or even like looking at the moment, maybe we can release some things to, to maybe experience something more fuller and it might be great to snuggle. And then if you fall asleep together, you know, if the points to connect, then, then let's do that. And we can let go of some of the expectations there too. Again, maybe trying to find a Kairos of the movie moment versus just releasing it and letting it be ordinary. And if that means a nap, so be it. I love that. And I think that's, that's sort of the secret to life is just finding, okay, we're doing these things. We're doing life. And it's finding the beauty in every moment that that we're that we're spending in life. You know what is what is the beautiful? What is the what is the the wonder uh, in life? And so I think uh, that's a that's a big secret is finding uh, finding wonder, finding the beauty in every moment, in every relationship. You know, I think um, we have a ways to go at at really applying this to our lives. But um, yeah, I, I love being on the journey and discovering wonder and beauty in the ordinary. Well, this is the part of our podcast where we talk about what we are into. What are we into this week? I am into daffodils. They started popping up all over town and we actually don't have any in our yard. So this is our first spring in our home. So I'm like, Dominic, maybe not this year, but maybe next year we can plant daffodils. And then in the spring, we'll have our own little pops of yellow coming up in the yard. Daffodils are what I'm into. Yes, yes those are fun. Well, I am into vacation planning. Uh, so I have two brothers and two sisters and we are spread all over the United States. And this summer it is going to work out where I will see every one of my siblings. So we're traveling to these different places to see family members. And so it's been really fun talking to my siblings and sort of asking them, what are the things in your city that are, you know, we should be looking to seeing we have small kids. So, you know, we like to be active and do things. And so it's interesting kind of today's conversation where, yes, maybe there's all the hoopla touristy things. And if, you know, I'm happy to dip my toes into that world, but also like my daughter wants to go fishing with one of her uncles and, and a message was like, oh, really? Like she really wants to do that. I was like, yes. Like if you have fishing gear, let's go fishing. And so, yes, you know, we can do the, the fun kid things where you buy tickets and do all the things, but I think also just these simple, ordinary things in my siblings towns. So I am into vacation planning. Wonderful. I think going along with that, uh, I know that we are going on vacation and we're going to be doing a lot of biking. Uh, my two daughters have started doing things at school. One is doing crew, the other is doing track. And so they're spending a lot of their afternoons getting fit. And I am into being aware of how unfit I am. And so trying to make space in my day to bike up a very steep hill to sort of get my stamina up uh, because I don't want my daughters to kick my butt on our bike rides. I want to be able to stay ahead of them. Uh, and I will be dragging my five-year-old on a tandem bike behind us. So I am into getting fit, at least in my mind. I don't know that I've fully applied my, my physical life to getting fit, but at least in my mind, I'm into getting fit. So um, it's probably more competition driven than, than I'd really, really like to admit, but that is what I am into hopefully this week, next week, and many weeks to come. We're so glad that you joined us for more resources. Please check out the contemplativelife.net. Until next time, we'll see you. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.